Hey, uh, well, let's start with this Telecaster. This guitar here I bought um, in August of 2014 from a guy named Terry Reed, who is a wonderful singer songwriter from England. And Terry was up for the gig in the New Yardbirds wow. um, before a guy named Robert Plant got it. And he was also up for the gig in, in Deep Purple before um, Ian Gillian got it as well. Um, and he bought this guitar in, I would say, September of 1968 when he was the opening act for the Farewell Cream tour. Right. And he bought it in Chicago. And by the time, this is what he says, by the time he reached New York City at Madison Square Garden, the front pickup had died. So Manny's Music, um, the famous Manny's Music, put this humbucker in the front, as you would. Yeah. And he owned it all these years and ended up selling it to me in August 2014. So it's my fourth year with it. And I always tell Terry it's his guitar. And, and I'm just like a custodian. He can always borrow it back when he wants. And, and I've seen him subsequently. He's a good friend of mine. And I use it every night. And there's a great video of him in 1971 at Glastonbury with this guitar. And two interesting things about the, the, the video. One, he's a wonderful singer, musician, great songs. You should check him out. And uh, two, uh, most importantly, this guitar was this condition in 71. I don't know what happened between 52 and 70, but it, it's, it hasn't changed much. And you get to see a very young David Lindley with his first pro gig playing with wow. Terry in, in, in the UK. Before Glastonbury was this huge festival that it is now. There was about, I don't know, 400 people in front of the stage. So, But I use it every night. It's tuned up to F with 11s, and it plays like a truck. God. And you um, said you're 11 through 52? 11 to 52, and Ernie Ball. And you're um, tuned up. Oh my well, I'm God. Tuned, well, on this guitar, I'm tuned up to F, because I bend. I do a lot of bending on this song called Slow Train. <sighs> and to capo first fret and then to bend, sometimes the strings get stuck here. So, sure. so I just, it's just easier to tune up and kind of, you know, grin and bear it for a song. And, yeah, well, and easy, it's easier if you're superhuman. I could not, that's like telephone poles, man. Well, you know, my friend Josh Smith uses 13s, and Ugh. I can't play his guitars, <laughs> and he can't play mine. He thinks mine are like too light. I'm like, wow, that's, it's, 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 it's all relative. So this is a nice guitar, and I've owned it for a long time. I, I love the tellies that, um, that are modified. You know, this one here has got the humbucker, and this is the little police mark where it was stolen in 1979, and Seymour Duncan actually found it for Terry. So, wow. In, in London. What a great story. And then often gets confused with the Terry Reed. This one here is a 1951 Nocaster. And I bought it again, uh, just like this. Um, the, there's a PAF out of an SG. I don't know, it's like a Les Paul Custom 1961, so it's like a gold PAF. How, now, how could you tell that is, how could you identify that as Because a, I, I bought a set of pickups from a gold oh, Les right. Paul, and I stuck the middle one in oh, here. there you go, okay. And I know this, and, um, and, it, and it's got this really great quacky out of phase between, this is my favorite um, flat pole pickup. I, I mean, it's just, for some reason, it's just, it just, like, just a little bit of, cut above all the other ones I've played. And, you know, it's, it's, been refretted and you know it's like a lot of times I show this to people and they go oh too bad I go what are you too bad this is great <laughs> way better than that lipstick thing yeah and you know the, the cool thing about these kind of like these kind of guitars is once it's been done then now you have like you just just don't even think about it and play it right you know and I beat the hell out of it every night and it's just it, this is a screwdriver you know the right. other one's a hammer it's a tool you know and, <laughs> and this one's in proper tuning and you know, you know, clip logo and everything else, and it's just been played, and and you know, it just it whatever you give it, it, it gives back, and that's you know, I put all this where and here and all that. And that's it's great. All me. So. Now, now the frets. Okay, I've been dying to ask on a, yeah. on an old guitar like that when the frets are going, mm -hmm. and you have it refretted. Do you up do you up the fret size or go with those? These are uh, frets that I've, I've always used, and um, uh, here in Nashville, there's a, a, a world treasure in a luthier named Joe Glazier. Yeah, I love Joe. And Joe has a specific size that we've kind of been using on Fender guitars for, for many years. And if you call him up, he'll, he will tell you, and it's no, no big secret. Yeah. And it's a little, it's the same width, only a little bit taller. But the way the Pleck machine works is it kind of takes a little bit of the crown off the top, so when you play them after 
when you first pick up the guitar after it's been refretted, it feels like it's been worn in. Because mm. all, we've all had those things where you get refretted guitars, and I'm like, wow, this is stiff. Yeah. You know? And, it, and that's not the case. So um, it's, it's, he's really a, a world treasure for <laughs> old guitar.